Hey everybody, I am Jared Ross, the Genie Vlogger, and welcome back to another Professional Genealogist Reacts. In today's video, I will be reacting to John Berman Solves Family Mystery in Amsterdam, and this is from CNN's Roots series, The Journey Home. I believe that's what it was called for the series. Um, I should give a little caveat to this uh, video in that I actually have seen it before, um, this is a little bit older of a video. This is from, I think, 2014, 2015. So it's been about four years, three years since I last saw it. So it's been a little while. So you should get some pretty good general reactions from me. But um, John Berman is actually a relative of mine. And this video discusses the shared line that John Berman and I have in the Espinosa family from Amsterdam. So I thought this would be a really fun video to react to, especially because I've had some people asking about my own family history. So it'd be kind of cool to let you view into one of my uh, favorite family branches in my Dutch Sephardi family lines. So uh, before we jump in, please be sure to give me a thumbs up. Really helps me out. And also subscribe. You can also click that bell so that you get notifications for future videos. But now let's go ahead and jump right in um, to John Berman Solves Family Mystery in Amsterdam. Why am I sitting here in front of this statue in, in this city, no less? Whoa. Amsterdam, the city of <laughs> it just like became so much better. The country of windmills and tulips. Well, I'm here because the two of us Baruch Spinoza. We share a name. This is Baruch Spinoza. I am John Spinoza Berman. Baruch Spinoza was a 17th century Dutch Jewish philosopher. A very big deal. Statues, portraits, even streets bear his name. Spinoza's petty ideas about God being inseparable from nature and his, at the time, haughty notions about freedom of thought were so radical they got him excommunicated, expelled from the Jewish community in Amsterdam in 1656. Scandalous then, now revered. So he's, he's a popular symbol for all kinds of things that we'd like to associate with. I'd like to associate with that. It's a good name to have, right? Absolutely. Good name, the, great lineage. Oh, if well, we thought, it's okay. more. The actual, um, the actual entry in the Portuguese Jewish community of Amsterdam in uh, what's known as the Eskimot books, um, they're basically the decisions of the Muhammad, the board of members who uh, ran the, the community in, in a sense. And their decision to uh, uh, banish um, to banish Baruch Spinoza was very, very harsh. But in these decisions, they don't explain why they did it. They don't give any reasoning. They don't talk about any of the, um, you know, any of the discussion or any of, of the arguments about whether or not to kick him out or whether to kick him out. All they say is the actual final decision. So technically... They don't know exactly why they kicked him out of the community, but based on most evidence, um, you know, based on, you know, uh, what he's written about and different uh, accounts, that is what is, you know, that that's the main thought is that, you know, it was based on his religious belief or, you know, his religious ideals and things that got him kicked out of the community. Fine which is what I grew up being told. When you've driven by with friends, do you point up there and I say, point up, I point up, For I'm... years, my father, Gerald Spinoza Berman, would point proudly at the Spinoza name carved in the Boston Public Library. And when you would see it, you know, what would you think? I would think that's me, that's my family, that's my heritage. My grandfather's name was Spinoza. My mother's name, maiden name was Spinoza. Um, and we thought that we were descendants from Baruch Spinoza. So you right. thought you were a philosopher yeah, prince. Absolutely. Which would make me the son of a philosopher prince. Or but something. Baruch Spinoza had no children. Problem, according to Dutch philosophy professor Michael Wiesenberg. What do you know about Spinoza, the man, in terms of his family life? Um, well, it's, it's fairly simple to say. He simply did, have, did not have any family life at all. 
He was never married. No marriage, no known children. After a lifetime of expectations, at last, Michelle Erkenbrack from Ancestry.com helped begin the search for an answer. An answer that intriguingly begins in Amsterdam, the birthplace of the philosophy. Amsterdam records are the so first great. Of Spinoza's in the United States was Benjamin Spinoza. And Benjamin is your second great grandfather. And he was born in Amsterdam. Yeah, I don't really speak good Dutch. But you don't have to speak Dutch to go to Amsterdam. Nearly everyone there speaks perfect English, including Hetty Berg. And I show you these Dutch is pretty the close to English. Of museum affairs for the city's Jewish historical museum. Like, walk me through the historic Jewish quarter. There are a lot of words in Dutch which are so close to English, it's ridiculous. Daughter, doctor. Uh, son, zun, father, vader, mother, mother. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of some other one. I mean, that's a lot of family name, but like, there are a lot of words in Dutch that are so similar to English. It's easy to figure that out. But there are a lot of words in Dutch that are not easy, uh, even close to English or easy to pronounce for English speakers. So. The girls' uh, orphanage was here. There were all kinds of uh, Jewish institutions uh, also on the same street. So Benjamin Spinoza was born here in 1850, 121 Rosh Burger. I can't say Rosh. Rosh. Just like you said, Raffenberger. I know I had family who lived on that. Well, the Spino that they Benjamin Spinoza <laughs> was a cousin. So obviously relatives. The neighborhood but... revolved around this gorgeous building. I will go to a Snoga one day. A 339 year old Portuguese synagogue filled with grandeur, not to mention treasure. It's all lined with gold leather of the 17th century. It was built by the tight knit community of Jews who, like Baruch Spinoza's family, emigrated from the Iberian Peninsula. How many people were members? There were about uh, 4,500 Portuguese Jews, um, part of this community. This synagogue, this community was everything. Yes. And to live outside this community would have been next to impossible. Yeah, it was it, re not really an option. <laughs> I mean, it was the Sephardi community was actually like separate from the Ashkenazi community. They, you know, it's not like they they avoided each other. They were pretty much right across the street from each other but you know if you were in the Sephardi community you usually did not marry or do anything do or you did not marry into uh, Ashkenazi families or the other way around and if you did it was pretty scandalous. Baruch Spinoza was really the very first Jew uh, at that time to live outside of a community. And he got tossed. I mean, he... he got tossed, so it was not out of free choice. Remember, yeah. he was excommunicated in 1656. A problem for him, and it turns out a problem for me, in my long-held belief that I might be his great, 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 etc. grandson. Ancestry.com uncovered a document from 1737. This, this right Isaac here, Espinoza. this is from the Bevolking registers. And this, or sorry, not, I've got that wrong. This right here is an Undertra register. This is what's also known as a marriage bond. And this is literally a, a document that's put out for a certain amount of time that's announcing that a marriage is going to happen. And if anyone has any sort of qualms with that, any problems, then they can go and, uh, you know, say their piece. So um, what it literally says, and we'll see what she says about it, but Isaac Espinoza von Zale, so from Zale, which is in Morocco, and then um, it gives more information. So the witness is his father, Daniel Espinoza, and then it goes in. Uh, to talk about, let's see, Barbara A. Coase, um, and it mentions Isaacs, but so yeah, I'm I'm not always the best with these, but I have enough uh, knowledge to be able to get a, the general gist of what they say in these. Um, is so this is the second. Part they're part literally one of my favorite six, records to use. Wow, and you're talking about early 1700s there. Yes, 
And yeah. that's my ancestry. So this is your seventh great grandfather that's talking about Isaac Espinoza. That's our shared ancestor. This is my this is Zali. this is my ancestry they're talking about. These are my ancestors at this point. And my goes on to talk about his <laughs> father, Daniel, Daniel Espinoza of Barbary. Wait, Barbary? Are you familiar with the Barbary Coast? Yeah, so you're dealing with like this, like North Africa? Yeah. Interesting. Zali, we think, is Saleh, which is part of Morocco. There was Morocco. A, a fairly big Me. Jewish community the there. Morocco that's in North Africa. My ancestors emigrated to Amsterdam from a Jewish community in what is now Morocco in 1722. Well, after Baruch Spinoza was already living in and scandalizing Amsterdam. My people were on a different continent. I am yep. not, it seems, a direct descendant. So if his story is not my story, what is my story? Very interesting. <laughs> it turns out the answer, buried in the Amsterdam City Archives with 700 Which are online records, for free. In its own right. Such a good yeah, website. Check out my tutorial about Eric it. Eric Heiselar found the records of my family's early They just did a huge Amsterdam update to the website. The so it's much easier. Well, a little bit easier Marked to use. One, a little bit harder. Letter for word. Something. Debt. Just another page. I mean, this is, this is the thing... This is the thing about not only the records from Amsterdam, but the records from the Portuguese Jewish community of Amsterdam is there are so many records. There's so many different records about the taxes, about debts, about collections. We have notary records. There's ketuba records, which are Jewish marriage records. But then you also have the, the Huvelic registers, which are the regular registers. I'm saying that terribly, but... Um, then you have your marriage bonds, which are the undertrial registers, and then you just have all sorts of like crazy collections. There are collections literally of people corresponding with each other. Uh, with the Portuguese Jewish community of Amsterdam, there's the despacho records, which are records that are about the Portuguese Jewish community giving money to members to then immigrate elsewhere. And it will often say where they go. So we can literally see where, you know, hun you know, hundreds, thousands, all these different members of the community are then immigrating to. So to to be able to not only find your way into a uh, Dutch tree, but to find your way into a Dutch Sephardi tree, uh, it, it's like the best thing genealogy-wise. It's probably the thing that really hooked me into diving so deep into genealogy um you know for years i've been interested and i'd go on ancestry and do stuff but it wasn't until i got onto genie.com and started diving into my dutch Sephardi ancestry that i became absolutely obsessed it's a list after list of jews gentiles and here's jan's figure the end figure thirty-three thousand two hundred ninety-five. <laughs> 33,000 guilders. This is in 1744. That's got to be a lot of money now. Half a million. Hit a half million dollars in debt. I'm not responsible for any of this, am I? Pay no. the family <laughs> debt for us, John. Is this where someone walks into the room here? And that's not even the big family scandal. For that, Eric looked nearly 100 years later, 1822, a birth record for another Isaac Spinoza. Okay, so... If I remember correctly, and I'll have to double check this, but Daniel Spinoza, born 1792, I believe is my shared ancestor with uh, John Spinoza. So um, if I remember correctly, Daniel Espinoza had a daughter, so a sister to Isaac Spinoza, and that daughter married an Enriquez Pimentel. And they had a, a daughter named Rachel Enriquez Pimentel, who then married a a, um, a Robles, an Isaac Robles. I don't, I'm trying to think of my family right off the top of my head, but that's that's where we connect. So we're we're connecting at Daniel Espinoza. It could be his father Isaac Espinoza, but I'm like I'm pretty sure it's Daniel Espinoza, grandson of Isaac the debtor. There's something weird about it. The father is named as the father, but there's no mention of marriage. Interesting. Right. 
There's no so there's a father listed, but there's no marriage. Is this unusual? Very unusual. And the son, Isaac? He's a mumser, which is a Jewish name for an illegitimate child without any rights. His offspring, too. That could be why Isaac's son, Benjamin, left Amsterdam and came to the United States in 1867. Benjamin. It could be, or it could be that he might have been part of the Hutz movement, which actually found its way to uh, the UK first and then to Amsterdam. So I, I'm, I'm kind of curious about that because my family took the exact same route. And in fact, I have an entire video all about Dutch Jewish migration to the US or just Dutch Jewish migration and actually how it led to uh, the eight hour workday. But it, that could be it. Um, or, you know, what he's saying could be could be uh, why his his branch of the family came here. Spinoza, May also Amsterdam explain why his branch changed it from Espinoza to Spinoza. In 1907. And the Spinozas and Spinoza Bermans have been there ever since. Benjamin Spinoza's father is what's called a momser. Do you know, do you know what a momser is? Not really. His parents were not married. Okay, there are so many... So I'm like looking at all of the different names of the stones in the background, and I'm pretty sure that I saw Pimentel. Might not be our history, but our name filled with its own history. Just trying to see if it's like a Sephardi cemetery or not. All right, yeah, that's a, that was that was a that was a cool video. Um, oh, let me make sure this is playing. <clears throat> so so yeah that was a that was a cool video uh i you know i like i said i've seen it before it, it, it's really enjoyable to me just because you know that's my family and so you know it's really really cool to to see C cnn talking about a line of ancestry that i descend from um but it, it goes into a lot of great information they talk to a lot of people who um have access to really great records and are very knowledgeable about the community and about the area. And, um, you know, if, if anyone out there has Dutch ancestry or Dutch Sephardi ancestry or even Dutch Ashkenazi ancestry, or just, you know, maybe they come from a Mennonite community, there are so many records available to you. And, um, you know, I have videos about how to do Dutch genealogy. I have a video specifically about the Amsterdam city archives. Um, but then there's tons of other city archives that are online. Any records that are digitized from the Dutch government bar a few different things for private thing, uh, private information. But for the most part, pretty much everything that's digitized from the Dutch government, you will find online for free. So if you have any family coming from anywhere in the Netherlands, you are lucking out. Just lucking out. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. It really does help me out. You can also click right about here if you'd like to subscribe. It is completely free to do so. And you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram at Genie Vlogger. I'm the Genie Vlogger. I will see you in my next video.